In this video, we're going to look at what is solubility, what's the difference between solubility and molar solubility, and how does KSP fit into this whole picture. Once we get this sorted out, we're going to find the molar solubility for barium iodate using the given KSP. Solubility is the mass of the solute that can dissolve in any given amount of solvent before the solution becomes saturated. And the unit that is expressed in is usually grams of solute over 100 grams of the solvent, or sometimes it's grams over 100 ml of the solvent or grams per liter. Now molar solubility on the other hand refers to the number of moles of the solute per liter of the solvent before the solution becomes saturated. Notice the difference here? The moment you insert molar, you're referring to the moles of solute and its liter of the solvent. So we're being very specific here. Basically, we're talking about the molarity of the solution before it becomes saturated. Therefore, the unit for molar solubility is going to be moles per liter, which is oftentimes abbreviated with capital M, which stands for molar. Now, what does KSP have to do with solubility? It's basically short for solubility product constant. It's the ratio of the concentration of the ions at equilibrium. Since it's a ratio, there's no unit for KSP. To better understand KSP, let's look at an example and we'll use it to write out the expression for KSP. So we have barium iodate as our example. So the first thing you need to know is what is the formula for the polyatomic ion, which is iodate. We need to know the charge for barium ion and we write out the ionic formula for barium iodate as BaIO32. The formula for barium ion is Ba2 plus and the formula for iodate ion is IO3 minus. So we do the crossover method, we have BaIO3 2. That's the formula for barium iodate. Now that's solid. When we place that in water, it's going to break into its constituent ion, which is a fancy word for just telling you it's positive and negative ion. So the cation is going to be our barium 2 plus, that's in equals. And then we're going to get our iodate ion, which is the IO3 minus. Now you notice we have a 2 in our barium iodate formula. That subscript 2 indicates that we have 2 of the iodate ion. So we need to place a 2 in front of our iodate ion. Now this is a fully balanced equation when our barium iodate dissolves in water. To write the KSP expression, Basically, it's the product of the concentration of the ions that are present when our solid dissolves. So the two ions that we have is barium 2 plus ion, that's its concentration, and our iodate ion, which is IO3 minus concentration. Now remember, we have that 2 in front of iodate ion. Now that 2 is going to turn into power of 2. So this is the expression for KSP of barium iodate. Now let's bring this equation a step further to set us up to calculate the molar solubility of barium iodate. Now one mole of barium iodate solid is going to dissolve to give us one mole of barium ion and two moles of iodate ion. So since we don't know how much barium iodate is going to dissolve, we're just going to call it X. So since it's one to one ratio for barium iodate to barium ion, we're just going to get X for barium ion and then we're going to get 2x for our iodate. 2 because we have that coefficient 2 in front of the iodate ion. So now, if we were to plug that into our KSP expression, we're going to get x for barium ion and 2x for iodate. Now, this is the part that you need to pay attention because in our KSP expression, we have iodate ion concentration to the power of 2, right? That 2x has to be raised to the power of 2. So therefore, the entire KSP equation is going to be equal to 4x to the power of 3. So if we were to find the molar solubility from given KSP, let's say this is a question that we're given. The KSP is 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9. We can solve that by equating that with 4x cubed, which is what we have found for our KSP expression. And we can solve for x. So to solve for x, we need to first divide both sides of the equation with 4. And then after that, we need to take a cube root 
we do cube root because we have 4x to the power of 3. So we need to take a cube root for that so that we can find x. So we need to plug the number on our calculator. We have 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9 divided by 4 and then do a cube root. If you don't know how to do a cube root, you just raise it to the power of 1 over 3. And that's going to give us 7.2 times 10 to the power of negative 4. That is x. Since one mole of barium iodate will produce one mole of barium 2 plus ion, that means the concentration of barium iodate will be the same as barium ion, which we set as x. Therefore, the molar solubility of barium iodate is 7.2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 molar. Don't forget the unit for that molarity, which is capital M, or moles per liter. If you're interested to find the molar solubility in the presence of a common ion, do look out for the next video in this series. I'm going to place the link in the description box. Here are the two videos that I've handpicked for you. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe. Your support means a lot to me.